It's going to be in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> this morning we're going to discover what true happiness is. True biblical happiness. What is it? Can you have it? Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper." Father, we do thank you again for this beautiful day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be gathered together. Lord, it's always good to be among God's people, to get encouragement. Uh, Lord, being in the family of God, we ask that you would, Lord, speak to our hearts this morning through your word. May the Holy Spirit of God guide us, Father, according to your will. Lord, I pray that you would continue to speak to the children's heart as well. Uh, Lord, teaching them what they need to learn through the scriptures, helping them, Father, just to have fun as they did in Sunday school, to have fun in junior church. Father, we ask that you would just press upon their hearts the importance of Jesus Christ. Lord, would you continue to do the same for us, continue to remind us of the importance of Jesus Christ in our life and how we can truly be happy in the Lord. For it's in your precious name we pray, amen. Uh, Several years ago, there was a study, there was a, I guess there was a poll taken uh, among a certain group of people Uh, to find out uh, what truly, if they were truly happy, you know, what makes a person happy. 99% of those that were polled in this special group were happy with their lives. 97% liked who they were. 96% liked how they looked. 99% expressed love for their families. And even 97% liked their brothers and sisters. There's just some things in life that, you know, makes people happy. Uh, People are always looking for happiness. People want to have joy uh, in their life. And we know that joy comes from the Lord. And we're going to uh, go through these verses this morning just looking at true biblical happiness in a Christian's life. But there are no, there are things in life that can happen that can suck the joy out of you, that can rob you of the the happiness that we find in Christ. And sometimes people are looking for happiness in all the wrong places, and they end up more unhappy than when they first uh, sought out for that happiness in this world. And we know Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, and he brings completeness in a person's life. At the end of this message, we're going to find out who this special group of people were uh, that was polled to find out uh, their happiness and what they found uh, their joy in. Because again, a lot of people are not happy with their life. A lot of people are not content with where they are in life. They're not happy with who they are. Uh, They're not happy with how they look. And uh, some are not happy with their families or even their brothers and sisters. Many people don't even talk to their brothers and sisters anymore for one reason or another. Uh, They don't love their families for one reason or another. But wouldn't you like to be the one that is 99%? If you can't be 100% happy, wouldn't you like to be the one that's at least 99% happy uh, with their life and 96% happy with how they look and uh, where they live and and be really content with the life that God's given. And we're going to find out this morning just how to have that happiness. The first thing I want you to understand and see in verse number one is the psalmist says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. First thing I want us to understand this morning is that happiness is a gift from God. Happiness is a gift from God. Blessed is the man, the verse starts out saying. In Psalm 16 and verse 11, the Bible says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. God tells us that in his presence is the fullness of joy. It's the fullness of of happiness. We find complete joy. We find complete happiness in the presence of God, having the presence of God in our life, because 
True happiness is a gift of God. It's a gift of God's grace. Blessed is the man. And we truly are blessed when we have salvation. Somebody once said that a blessed man is a saved man. And truly happiness is found in God's gift of eternal life. God's grace that saves us. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 10, the Bible says, The angel said unto them, speaking to the angels, or speaking to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. As the angel spoke to those shepherds and told them, Fear not, that he was bringing good tidings of great joy, because that great joy we know is found in Jesus Christ. We can have great joy in the world that we live in, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what society may say, because we find our joy in the one who laid down our life for us, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans 10, 15, the Bible says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. This morning, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you should be one of the happiest people in this world because your life has been changed by the power of God. Your life's been changed by the love of Christ who willingly laid down his life. Nothing in this world should rob us of our joy in the Lord. Again, our joy as Christians is not found in society. It's not found in the ways of this world. It is found in Jesus Christ. There are too many Christians today that are walking around sad looking, walking around depressed, walking around as though they have no life. Our life is and should be wrapped up in Jesus Christ. Now, can you be happy and live in society that uh, does not promote true happiness when you have the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes, you can. Again, true biblical happiness is not found in the world. It is found in Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I do not want the devil to rob me of my joy of the Lord. I do not want society to tell me that I cannot be happy in the Lord. If someone in my workplace can be happy because their favorite football team won the Super Bowl, if somebody in my workplace can be happy, somebody in my family can be happy for something in their life that does not pertain to a relationship with Jesus Christ, then most certainly I can be joyous and happy in Jesus Christ because he has changed my life. Again, don't allow this world to rob you of the joy of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy, the psalmist said in Psalm 16, because it is a joy that is given by the Lord. Our happiness is the gift of God's grace because we understand God has saved us and forgiveness through Jesus Christ brings joy. Look at Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. There is, if it's not you... There is somebody in your life that does need to know that true joy is found in Jesus Christ. If I'm always looking in the world, if I'm always looking to the world to make me happy, if I'm always looking to mankind to make me happy, if I'm always looking to the ways of the world to make me happy and to give me joy, I'm going to continue to find misery. I'm going to continue to find defeat because as a child of God, my happiness comes from the Lord. My joy comes from the presence of God in my life, and I need to continue to recognize the presence of God in my life by reminding myself, by reminding myself, reminding myself that I am saved and on my way to heaven. I've been given something that I do not deserve, and that is the forgiveness of God. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Keepeth the law. He that continues to believe and trust in the word of God. And God's word says that no man can pluck you out of the Father's hand. Jesus said that. 
And the Bible also tells us in 1 John chapter 5 that these things were written that we may know that we have eternal life. In fact, look at 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. <clears throat> and look at verse 13. Back up to verse 12. Back up to verse 11. Back up to verse 10. You know what? Back up to verse 9. We'll get there in a minute. Okay, we'll start at verse 9. Verse 9 says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Some people put a lot of stock in what people say. Some people trust what man says more than what God says. But the Bible says, if we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, because that witness in you is the Holy Spirit of God. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. Remember that Holy Spirit will always witness with your spirit that you are a child of God if you've put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater for this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Remember, Jesus said he came to give life and to give it more abundantly. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, you and I have confidence in God's ability to save us and keep us saved. Now, if I am a child of God because I have the witness in me, I've put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit's taken residence in my life, I have life because of Jesus Christ. He wants to give me more life, an abundance of life. He doesn't want me to have a miserable life. He doesn't want me to have a discontent life. He doesn't want me to have a life that has no meaning to it. He came into my life to show me the meaning of life, which is Jesus Christ in me. He came into my life to help me to see that, you know what, I have a life that is blessed by the Lord, as the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 1, blessed is the man. When I remind myself that even though life may be unfair, it may not be going the way that I want it to. I'm still going to rejoice in the joy of thy salvation. I'm still going to rejoice in the fact I'm a child of the king. And whatever's going on in my life, it's an opportunity for God to show himself how much he loves me and how much that he cares about me and how much of his joy he wants to shed in my heart. You know what? When I'm reminded of the forgiveness of God... But he, as Proverbs 29 says, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. When I remember God's worthy, you know what? I'm a child of the king. I've been forgiven. That brings great joy. That I'm not condemned because of sin anymore. I'm a child of the king. I have a bright future ahead of me. And because I have a bright future ahead of me, I have a home in heaven. And that brings me joy. That brings me great joy in Revelation 21 verse 4. The Bible says, And God shall wipe, wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. You know, I'm looking forward to that day when there's no more struggle, 
when there's no more pain, there's no more sorrow, there's no more death, God's going to wipe away all the tears because he's prepared a special place for his people. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. You know what? When I think about heaven, if I cannot find any joy in this world, if I can't even find joy in my house, because you know what? Things break down. You have to maintain your house. I mean, I would love a house where, you know what? I don't, nothing has to be fixed. Nothing has to be painted. Nothing gets broken. Nothing gets scratched. I would love a house like that, but you know what? There is a house like that in heaven because the carpenter has made it for me, and it's perfect. It's maintenance-free. But you know what? If I cannot find happiness in the things of this world, and, and honestly, the things of this world, you know, the joy it brings can only last so long, but you think about your relationship with the Lord. The devil might can take your health, your wealth, and everything else, but he cannot take your salvation. I've lost jobs before, but I still had salvation. I've struggled with health before. I've still had salvation. Those, un, those unwanted medical bills that come that can rob you of your joy because it's like, that's a large number. But I still have my salvation. Don't let the devil rob you of the joy of your salvation. You're a child of the king. There's a place been prepared for you because he loves you. Happiness is the gift of God's grace. Blessed is the man. We're blessed because God has saved us and he continues to strengthen us through his grace. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, the Bible says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. What was going on at this time is that the people realized that they had done wrong. They had realized they had sinned against a holy God. They had realized the destruction of the city of Jerusalem was because of their sin. And yet on this day, they were encouraged through Nehemiah, who was speaking to them for the Lord, reminding them, hey, it's a joyous day. God has brought us back. God's going to rebuild the city. God's going to bless us again. God's going to bless this habitation again. And remember that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Every one of us needs the strength of the Lord, which is our joy. Every one of us needs to be reminded, you know what? Again, my joy doesn't come through another person. Though people can cause you to rejoice. I mean, again, if somebody knocked on my door and said, hey, you just won $500 million. I would rejoice. That person came to my house and gave me the check. I would rejoice in that. But more so, I'd rejoice in the Lord who caused me to have favor that I would get a million, you know, $500 million. But listen, that will probably never happen in my lifetime. But you know what I do? And you have something far greater than money. Because money truly can't buy the joy of the Lord. It can't buy a true happiness. It can't buy a relationship with the God of heaven. Happiness is the gift of God. And it is God's grace that strengthens us. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you and I sit and meditate on who God is and what God has done for us in our life, I've often said this, but if God does not do another good thing for you or me, he's already done too much. Think about the day that you were saved. Think about the day that the Lord came into your life. Now, in Sunday school, we kind of we looked at, you know, just the benefit of the Lord. 
in Psalm 103, I mean, there are benefits to being a child of the King, the King of kings and Lord of lords. But your salvation and my salvation is the greatest thing that has ever happened to us, and we should, and we should find joy in that. We should find strength in the fact that, you know what? The Lord is my strength, and I will rejoice in the one who loves me unconditionally. Next thing I want you to look, at, look back, if you would, at uh, Psalm chapter 1. Look at the second part of verse number 1. Again, you know, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe John 10.10 10 needs to be the theme for the year. It's just something that I've been thinking about, something that I'm always bringing up, and that's the fact that Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. He's already got the lost in his clutches, but he wants to steal God's people. Now, he can. He can't take you out of God's hands, but what can he do? Like I said, he can cause you to think something that's not true. Are you saved this morning? Are you a child of the king? Is heaven your home? Don't let, the, don't let the devil rob you of your joy. Don't let the devil keep you from happiness, true happiness that's found in Jesus Christ. Don't allow yourself and myself as well be convinced that God doesn't care. God does care. He proved it on Calvary when he willingly laid down his life for you and me. But you look at verse number one of Psalm chapter one again, blessed is the man and you and I and everyone else that knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is truly blessed. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Again, as a child of the king, as a Christian, as a born-again believer, you and I will not find joy and happiness in this world that's lasting. We will not find true biblical happiness in the counsel of this world. Because the counsel of heathen men, lost men, unbelievers, will never give us the joy and happiness we're looking for. You and I need to decide against the direction of the world. We need to decide against the worldly direction. Take your Bibles and look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, again, many people are looking for happiness. They're looking for the answer. They want, they want something to help their life to be more meaningful, and we will never find it in this world. It is found only in Jesus Christ. But again, we have an adversary that wants us to be convinced otherwise. We have an adversary that wants us to follow after worldly wisdom that is foolishness, in the eyes of God and compared to the wisdom of God. You know what, as a, as a, before I even read this, as I'm just thinking about it, listen, there was a time in my life where I tried being a Christian and living in the world. It just, it, you can't be happy doing both. You can't be happy trying to walk with the king of kings and do your own thing and try to, you know, still have the ways of the world be a part of your life. It just doesn't work. It's misery because God has called us out. The Bible says, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Come out from among them, be ye separate. Because you know what? Again, even though we have to live in this world, we're not a part of this world anymore. We're a part of the kingdom of God. We're part of God's family, and the only place we're going to find true happiness is in our relationship with Jesus Christ. But... To truly be happy, happiness is the decision of a believer to decide against worldly direction. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 tells us, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world." And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Notice the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Everything. Now, God's given us things to enjoy, all right? Uh, what's in the world? Well, my family's in the world, okay. 
But you know what? I love my family. But the only way I can enjoy my family and find happiness in my family is to have a relationship with Christ. I understand that my family will not always be there for me because my family will not always understand what I may be struggling with. What I'm saying is there are things in this world, yes, that God's given us to enjoy, but we don't need to love this world and the things of this world more than God, who's given us eternal life and who can satisfy us and fulfill us and help us to feel loved and complete and to guide us. Again, when I think about when I think about deciding against a worldly direction, the world that we live in will never point us to Christ. And I say us as in God's people. You will never go to a lost person and they will never counsel you to follow Jesus Christ. They will never counsel you to trust the wisdom of God. They will never counsel you to let the word of God truly be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. They will never encourage you in the Lord because they are of this world. That's why the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Because this world is not our home. We have been called out of this world. We still have to live in this world till the Lord calls us home, but the Lord wants us to rely upon him. He wants us to find ourselves in Christ. He wants us to find our happiness and joy in the Lord. I've never met, I have never met a depressed Christian who was completely trusting God for everything. The depressed Christians that I find, that I meet, that I try to encourage and try to help, it's because they're struggling with their relationship with the Lord. They're struggling with trusting the Lord. They're struggling with believing that God even cares. Because so many people in their life don't care. Again, God is not a human. Praise the Lord for that. God is a loving God who is a forgiving God who is a gracious God, who loves you very much. If he didn't, he wouldn't have died on Calvary for you. I mean, that's even going back, I'll repeat myself, going back to verse, to, to, to verse 1 and even point number 1, we can find joy in our salvation because we're saved. It reminds me, my God loves me. My happiness doesn't come from this world. My happiness comes from my relationship with my Heavenly Father. But I do want to say this, you cannot separate happiness from holiness. I kind of alluded to that a minute ago. You cannot separate happiness from holiness. Holiness meaning your relationship with the Lord. Not that you're sinless, not that you're perfect. We can't be sinless until we meet our Lord and Savior face to face and get our glorified bodies. But if I want true happiness, then I must do it God's way. Again, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You cannot separate happiness from holiness. If we truly want the joy of the Lord, if we truly want the happiness in our life that we desire, we must refuse the counsel of the ungodly. We must refuse the counsel of the ungodly because the ungodly will never counsel us in the promises of God's word. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 15 reminds us, My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. The, the counsel and wisdom of this world is not here to help us. The wisdom and counsel of God is here to help our life, to help us to grow in the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm not going to find what I need in the wisdom of man, in the counsel of man that does not believe in my God or my Savior. So I am to refuse the counsel 
of the ungodly. And I am not to, as the Bible says, standeth in the way of sinners. I'm not to stand in the way of sinners. I'm not to walk in their way. Proverbs 4.19 says, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And I'm not supposed to uh, sit in the seat of the scornful. Again, the scornful are those that are against my God. Those that do not believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Proverbs 3.34 says, Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Again, you cannot separate happiness from holiness. God wants us to walk with him and to rely on him, to trust him, to seek him for wisdom. Job chapter 5 verse 17 says, Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. That's a strange thing. Despise not the chastening of the Almighty. I mean, when I was a kid, I did not rejoice in the chastening of my father. I tried to stay on his good side, and there was a handful of times I got on the wrong side because of my own choosing. And I suffered the chastising of my father. But the chastising of our Heavenly Father has always been for our good. That God is always wanting to help us to develop our relationship with him, to develop our trust, to develop our hope, to develop our faith, to help strengthen our resolve that, you know what? God is my God, and I will always run to him. I will always rely upon him. I will always seek him with all of my heart. Behold, happy is the man whom... God correcteth. You know what? If God is working, if there comes a day in my life where I do not see God working in my life, if I find myself going through life and, and doing whatever I want and it just seems like you know, nothing's happening, I'm just whatever I want and it just seems like God's not talking to me, God's not guiding or directing me, I'm going to be very worried. Because you know what? As God works in our life, as God shows us things at times that may be wrong in our life, God says, burns our heart, speaks to us and says, you know what, you're not trusting me as much as you should. You're not relying upon me. You're having this difficulty in your life that you don't have to have if you will trust me, if you will give it to me. I mean, I want, I want to know that God is always there and God wants us to know that he's there. But you and I have to continue trusting him, continue relying upon him, letting him be our joy and our happiness. And the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Again, Job said, behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. You know why Job said that? You remember the life of Job. I mean, Job was chosen by God to go through a trial. Because God said of Job that Job was an upright man. He, he eschewed evil. He feared God. He was someone that had a relationship with God. And through that trial in Job's life, uh, Job went through a very hard time in his life. I mean, he started out in the beginning just all positive. You know, just even when he was told to curse God and die, he said, shall not we receive evil and good at the hand of the Lord. I mean, he understood, you know, my life is in God's hands, you know. Whatever God thinks that is good for me, whether it's bad or not, then you know what, I'm going to trust the Lord. And he even, he even said with his own lips, you know, uh, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. But you know what? In the middle of Job's trial, as it continued on, Job got to a place where he, he really did want his life to end. He really wished he wasn't living anymore. Because he even told the Lord, if I was never born, I wouldn't be going through this struggle. I wouldn't be going through this hardship that is over my head. But you know what? Not only was God letting us see that God's in control and not the devil, because the devil couldn't do anything unless God allowed him. And you read that plainly in the scriptures. But God loved Job more and wanted to show Job that, listen, the one who created the heavens and the earth, 
is the very one that has your best interest in mind, is the very one that wants you to continue trusting, relying upon the very one that has given you your life. Job, later on, again, he's able to say in Job 23, as he goes forward and backward, I mean, he's looking all around for God. He says, I can't see God. You're not always going to be able to see God working in your life. There's going to be times where, you know what, I don't even feel he cares. I don't even feel he's around. But that's where faith comes in. And like Job, he knows the way that I take. And when I come forth, I'll come forth as gold. Because you know what? My joy and my happiness is not found in my circumstances. But I can find happiness in my circumstance in the one that I'm trusting to take me through it. I've got something that I'm facing this year that will be made known to the church after Wednesday. Something I've never faced before. And I have to be honest, I have no anxiety over it. I even say that for the sake of my family that knows what it is. I have no fear of the outcome. And just so there's no, you know, specula- you know wrong speculations, it's, it's health issues. Had some doctor appointments, and there's something that has been found out that will need surgery. And Wednesday, I go to talk to the surgeon about it. But what I'm saying is there's such a peace about it because I know it's in the Father's hand. There's been times in my life before where it was like anxious, fearful. You know, why is God allowing this? What I'm saying is happiness is not found in a perfect life because no one has a perfect life. But you can have a perfect relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to help you through life. Happiness is not found in a perfect life, but it is found in a perfect relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, happy is the man. I want you to look at verse number 2 very quickly. Psalm chapter 1, verse number 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. A place that you and I can find joy and happiness and truly in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy is in God's word. We decide to reject the worldly wisdom and the worldly ways And as God's people, we decide to follow the truth of God's word. Psalm 118, verse 24 says, This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice as long as everything's okay. As long as there's no health issues, as long as the finances are good, as long as the job is good, the boss stays off my back, as long as I know that everybody likes me, and uh, everybody loves me, and everybody will always be there for me, I'll rejoice in that day. That day will never come. Because you will never have all of that going perfectly well. But this day that we're in right now, February the 6th, 2022, is the day that our Heavenly Father has made for us. This day is the day that He hath made to show himself great and mighty in your life, and for you to enjoy your relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm facing. You don't know what's going on. No, I don't. A lot of people, I don't know what's going on in their life. Some people tell me. Some people don't. But you know who does know? Your Heavenly Father. 
and he's given us a day to rejoice in. He wants us to rejoice in him. He wants us to decide to delight ourselves in his word that is true and comforting. And I try to tell people when, when I'm counseling people that as people, when I say people, I mean God's people, is that this book right here is where you find the answers to life. This book right here is what gives comfort and assurance that everything's okay, that God's in control, and that whatever's going to happen, I'm trusting God that it's for my good and his glory. Listen, sometimes we may even think, well, that's easy for you to say because you, you're not facing what I'm facing. It seems like you never have a bad day in your life. Everybody has a bad day. And, some day, and sometimes those days don't end. It seems like every day is a bad day. But then God gives you a break and gives you a good day, and then the bad days start up again, just to remind you of his goodness. Sometimes you, you, have, you have times like that where it seems like the whole week is bad. I'm glad that week's over. And then you enter another week, and it's like, oh, right? That's because our focus is wrong. If I'm always focused on what is bad and not focused on the one who can help me, well, I'm never going to find any happiness or joy in the bad times. Again, as a child of God, as a Christian, as a born-again believer, our joy is in the Lord. We can walk uprightly before the Lord. We can walk with joy and happiness in our hearts because of our relationship with the Lord and because we believe God's word and we are applying God's word to our life. Somebody once said, if the world is our main object of rejoicing, we can't rejoice always since there's so much evil and suffering. I'll say that again. If the world is our main object of rejoicing, if I'm trying to find joy in the world, we can't rejoice always since there's so much evil and suffering in the world. We have to decide to delight in the word of God. Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. You're a Christian this morning. You put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You're called by the name of the Lord. You're called by the name of Christ. Thy words were found. I did eat them. Again, if we find ourselves battling depression, fat, battling sadness, unhappiness, we find ourselves just fearful, we find ourselves anxious, we find ourselves not knowing what to do. There's no peace, there's no settlement in me. I just, I can't even sleep at night. Here's the answer as a child of God. Unfortunately, God does not Act like a human parent or a human father who wants to force the medicine into the child's mouth because they know it's good for you. It may not taste good, but it's good for you. Open your mouth, and I don't know if you, you know, there's been times in my life where I've had to, you know, open the child's mouth because it's like they're running a fever, they're sick, I know this medicine's going to help. And you try to force that medicine in so it will do what it's supposed to do. You see, God's not like that. God's like, here's the medicine. As a child of God, here's the medicine. It's up to us if we take it and believe it and apply it. Thy words were found, I did eat them. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Why? Why is this so important? Because it reminds us of the goodness of God. It reminds us of his faithfulness. It reminds us of the fact that he loves us. You know what? I can think of a bunch of people who don't believe this. And they call themselves a Christian. But you know what? That's not up for me. What do I believe? Because we can always think about somebody else. But do I believe it? Am I doing it? Am, am I applying the scriptures to my life? Am I following God's recommendation for a happy life? Because if I'm not, then I can't expect to be happy. And I cannot blame God if I have no joy, if I'm not spending time in his presence. 
God's given us a wonderful gift, the gift of salvation, the gift of a relationship, the gift of wisdom, the gift of true joy. Jesus said in John 13, 17, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. She said, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. James even said it, uh, he said it the same way. James, uh, in the book of James, he said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Proverbs 29, 18, again, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. He that truly believes in the word of God and, and, and seeks after God and, and, and uses the scriptures as God wants us to use them. We find happiness, we find joy. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, the, God told Joshua, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. God says the only way as, as his people that we can have true success and prosperity is applying the word of God to our life, believing in the promises, allowing it to truly guide us according to God's will. Psalm 19, verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. You know what? As the Bible continues to warn us about our adversary, the adversary being the devil, as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. When we look in the scripture, we're reminded, okay, I have an adversary, but I have someone who gave me victory. I have someone who fought the battle for me. I have, I have somebody on my side who thinks highly of me because he died for me, and the devil has no control over my life. The devil has no business in my life. Don't give place to the devil. Don't let the devil convince you that you're defeated, that you can't have any joy or happiness. God says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He'll give you that rest unto your soul. He'll give you the joy and the happiness that you need. I want you to notice one more thing in uh, Psalm chapter 1, look at verse number 3. Again, verse 1, blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight... His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Can I just, let me just say this one more thing about God's word. If you haven't already been doing it, it's going to be hard to pick it up and to do it. It's going to be hard to pick up the Bible and start reading because your flesh is going to fight against it if you haven't already been doing it. It's going to fight against it. But the more you do it, the more delight you find because you find yourself finding the answers. You find yourself hearing from God. You find yourself having that peace and comfort on the inside, being reminded that, you know what? God is my God. He's an almighty God. He's my fortress. He's my buckler. He's my high tower. He is my salvation. He's always there for me, and he gives me the comfort that I need, the direction that I need. Am I a child of the king that believes that? Am I the one in verse 3 as it says? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, happiness, true biblical happiness, is an expression of our spiritual growth. It is an expression of our spiritual growth because we're planted spiritually. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Jesus said in John 4, 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You know, holy, the Holy Spirit is a pitcher of water. Or I should say water is a pitcher of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus talks about the water on the inside, bubbling up, springing forth. Holy Spirit's been given to us to help us to live this new life, to help encourage us, to help us to be reminded, get your eyes back on the author and finish of your faith, who will help you. Because you know what? 
When I look around and, and there may not be anybody that, that really cares what I'm going through, I can always look to the Lord and he's saying, come on, follow me, keep going. Have you ever felt like you were being beaten down? Ever felt like all hope was lost? Think about Stephen. Stephen being stoned for his faith. He was surrounded by people who hated him. He was surrounded by a world that hated Jesus and hated anybody that named the name of Christ. That would be a pretty tough thing to have to go through. But you know where he found his happiness? You know where he found the strength to say, lay not this sin to their charge? He got his eyes on the author and finisher of his faith. The Bible records that he looked up. And he even said, I see the heavens open. I see the Son of God, the Son of Man, standing at the right hand of the Father. That was Jesus encouraging Stephen, you're doing a good job. Don't let what people are doing or saying convince you that's not worth living for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus will come and he will encourage you. He will help you and me to fulfill the Father's will. He's given us of the Holy Spirit to help us. And the Bible even tells us to be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, And be not drunk with wine, where is, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And this is how we can be filled with the Spirit. This is something I'm about to read. It is something that every one of us, every child of God, every Christian, every born-again believer, every person that names the name of Christ and believes in Jesus Christ should be doing because it will help us. The Bible helps us, yes. That's why it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. I just don't feel like making melody in my heart. I've had a bad day. I'm going through difficulties. That's the whole reason why we do need to sing to the Lord, because it says, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We as God, listen, there was music I used to listen to, ungodly music that I used to listen to. But not anymore. Because you know what? He put a new song in my heart. He put a new desire within me that, you know what, that old filth, worldly music, can't stand it. But there's something about songs that speak about my Lord. There's something about songs that speak about the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. There's something about the song Amazing Grace. There's something about many of those hymns. But you know what? For me to sing it, for me to listen to it, because what goes in your ears affects your heart. What goes in your eyes affects your heart. The devil wants to affect your heart for evil. But the Lord wants to affect your heart for good. We need to be listening to good godly music. We need to be surrounding ourselves with good godly music, obviously the word of God, anything that promotes Christ. We need to surround ourselves with that. It will help us, and it will help us to produce the fruit of the Spirit in our life, which it happens to be love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. We need the fruit of the Spirit in our life. We need the joy of the Lord. We need the peace of of Christ that passes all understanding. I told you as we come to a close that there was a survey done a few years ago among a special group of people, and 99% of them were happy with their lives. 97% of them liked who they were. 
96% of them liked how they looked. They weren't bothered by how they looked. 99% of them expressed love for their families. 97% liked their brothers and sisters. That special group of people that were surveyed a few years ago were those with Down syndrome. The very ones that society looks down upon, the very ones that sometimes are aborted because the parent does not want to raise a child that has Down syndrome. They're the most happiest people. And we complain, I say we, and I'm not saying you, just we in general, we people, complain about things in our life when we have it so good. I can, as, as I was thinking about this, when I was writing this message out, I remember there was a time where my wife and I, in the early years, went to Walmart. There was a a Christian music group that, that came to Walmart and they, they, they came there, they were invited by Walmart, they were going to play some of their songs and it was a, it was a band that we listened to in the early days and as they were playing this one song, I mean, I just, I noticed him as he came in, you know, a young man with Down syndrome using a, using a walker to, to get in and, you know, I kept my eye on him you know, just watching, you know. And as, as the music played, Sandra might remember this, and I just remember looking over, and as they were singing their song about the Lord and stuff, I mean, he's, he's just grinning from ear to ear and just dancing. I mean, he's the best that he can. I mean, just he was excited about the music about God. And I remember looking and just seeing other people that were disgusted at him. It's like, man, he's got more joy of the Lord than you do. Because sometimes we think to have true happiness, our life has to be perfect. But again, that's not where true happiness comes from. True happiness comes from a relationship with our Creator. And some might even quote, well, you know, some could say, well, why did God allow him to be born like that? So God could show that someone like that can have the joy of the Lord. And teach us a lesson. And I say us is just in people, not, not you. I was taught a lesson that day when I'm saying, listen, don't allow yourself to be robbed of the joy of the Lord. Don't allow yourself not to have the happiness of Christ in your life. The Bible says in Psalm 146, verse 5, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God. Again, a child of God this morning, our hope is in our God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. You understand? God blesses his people. God intervenes in our life. God wants to do great things in our life. God wants us to be filled with his joy. God wants us to be happy in the Lord. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, Praise ye the Lord.